This video focuses on facility location and capacity location problem. In such problems, we are given a set of supply sources with specified capacities and a set of customers with specified demands. We want to determine which facilities should be open and find the best allocation of supply to the customers to minimize cost. In this particular example, we are going to determine where to locate our coffee shops and how to allocate the supply to meet the coffee demand of the students at RPI campus. To be a little more formal, we have a set of supply points, which are the potential coffee shop locations, and a set of demand points, which are the students in the buildings. So the map on the bottom left here shows six buildings. So we have Troy and low buildings. These are relatively small buildings. Therefore, it is not really feasible to locate a coffee shop in these buildings because there's not enough room. Therefore, we are going to consider Ricketts, CII, DCC and JEC as our potential coffee shop locations. So, on the other hand, we have six buildings and there are students in all of these buildings. That means we have a coffee demand in all of these six buildings. Therefore, we have four supply points and six demand points in this particular example. There are some restrictions such as each coffee shop has a capacity which is the maximum number of students to serve and also all coffee shops that we are going to open can be allocated to any of these buildings. However, we are going to have to pay some amount of money for the allocation decision. Also, we are going to pay a fixed operating cost upon opening a coffee shop. So, in terms of the data of this problem, when we describe it, we have two sets. The first one is the set of buildings to locate a coffee shop in, indexed on I from 1 to 4. And the second set is the set of buildings in which there exist students whose coffee demands are to be met and this set d is indexed on j from one to six because we have six demand points our parameters remember again parameters are the values that we know in advance before we start solving the problem so these are known values and let's define what parameters we have in this problem so the first parameter is dj it is the total number of students in building j who buy coffee on campus. This basically gives me the demand in building J. KI is the capacity of coffee shop that is to be opened in building I. That also represents the maximum number of students that the coffee shop in building I can serve. And CIJ is the cost represented by the amount of time a student in building J can walk to building I in which there's a coffee shop. CIJ can be described in different ways depending on the problem type. In general, location allocation problems define CIJ as the production cost or shipment cost per unit from the facility I to market point J. And the last parameter we have is the fixed cost of operating coffee shop I. So we have four parameters. These are the values that we know in advance. And by using these parameters and these restrictions and definitions that I just talked about, our goal in this problem is to determine which coffee shops to open as well as the best allocation of students to the open coffee shops that minimizes the total cost. So now I am going to talk about my mathematical model. So the first step when I formulate my mathematical model is to define my data parameters, decision variables, objective function, and then constraints. So let's start with the objective function. What decision variables we have? Let's talk about it. So we have two decisions to make in this problem. One, where to locate my coffee shops. Two, how to allocate my coffee supply to meet the demand. So yi on the left here is one, if a coffee shop in building I is opened and zero otherwise. So that is going to represent my open or not decision. Xij is the number of students that go to building J from building I to get their coffee. And Xij is going to represent my allocation of my supply to the demand points. Therefore, we have two decision variables. 
And our objective in this problem is to minimize the total cost, right? And what components our objective function has? Fixed cost and cost due to walking. So fixed cost is given in this table on the left. I just generated some random values based on the building size or some other constraints. These are randomly generated, not that important at this point. And these are fixed cost values. And the table right above that is the CIJ matrix. This is the cost due to walking. So if you look at these values, these one to four are my I index and these one to six are my J index. So the first value here, C11 equals 25, means that we are going to pay 25 units to go from building one to the coffee shop in building one. That means there's a coffee shop in our building and we are going to pay 25 units. This is a small amount compared to some other amounts. Like you, you can see 180, 110 here, 180 and so on. But if we have a coffee shop in our building, that means we are going to have a shorter trip. That is also going to mean that we are going to pay less. So by following this same idea, based on the distances between the buildings, I generated some values. So this is going to be used in our objective function as well as the fixed cost values. So let's write down the objective function. So minimize. My first component is fixed cost, right? So for fixed cost for building one is 5,000. 5,000 Y1. So why did I multiply it by Y1? It is because if I locate my coffee shop in building one, then this yi value will become one. And then this product is going to equal 5,000. Then I'm going to pay. If I don't locate my coffee shop, y1 is zero. And this product is zero as well. And I'm not going to pay it. Same idea for the next one, 7500 y2. Also, these values come from here. And 75 comes from the same table as well. Same idea, 9,000, Y3, 10,000, Y4. So this is my fixed cost component of the objective function. Now I'm going to write down the cost due to walking. So for each pair of buildings, for each pair of I and J, I am going to multiply CIJ and XIJ. And now let's start. Okay. So C11 is 25 times x11. This means for each, each, for each student who walks from building one to the coffee shop in building one, we are going to pay 25 units plus 180. It comes from here, x12. This means for each student who walks from building two to building one to get coffee, we are going to pay 180 units. Similar logic, 230 x13, dot, dot, dot. Let's write down the last two here. C45 is 180 times x45 plus 120 x46. So this completes our objective function. We have our fixed cost component and cost due to walking. And now what I am going to do next is talk about my constraints. So what kind of constraints I have in a location allocation problem? One, I have a demand constraint. So the first one here, it says demand of each customer must be met. So this each customer's customer tells me that my constraint is going to be for all customers. How many customers do we have? We have four customers. In other words, demand points. Therefore, we are going to have four of these constraints. So the first one. So the question right now is, where can the students in building one get their coffee on campus? We have four potential coffee shops. Therefore, we can get the coffee from building one, building two, building three, building four. What is the demand for building one? 100 from this table. 100. And this is for demand point one 
or customer one. The second constraint for building two, where can the students in building two get their coffee? They can get the coffee from building one, building two, building three, building four. And the demand is 90 from this table. Demand point two. We are going to have four more of these constraints because we have six coffee shop locations and I'm going to ask you to complete them. So six of these constraints. And the second set of constraints is the coffee shops cannot serve more customers than their capacities. This tells me we are going to have a constraint for each coffee shops, each coffee shop locations. Therefore, we are going to have four of these constraints. So for building one, where can the coffee shop in building one allocate their supply? It can allocate its supply to building one, building two, building three, building four, building five, and building six. This value, this allocation, total allocation must be less than or equal to 250. That value comes from this table. Here we need to be careful because this assumes that this coffee shop is opened. However, it may not be the case. So we need to multiply this 250 by Y1 to capture the open or not open decision. So if Y1 is zero, say one, if Y1 is one, then this product is 250. Therefore, I have a capacity of 250 to allocate. If it is zero, then this product is zero and we have no capacity to allocate. This is this idea for this multiplication of the capacity and the Y decision variable. Let's do the same for building two. Building two can allocate its supply to building one, building two, three, four, five, and six. And it is less than or equal to 200 Y2. Same idea follows for, for the rest of the two constraints and I'm going to ask you to complete them for constraint total. And next thing I am going to show is the decision variables. I have xij greater than or equal to zero for all ij and yi is binary for all i values. So my constraint set is ready. Decision variables are here and I already formulated my objective function. I am done. My model is ready. Last thing I want to show you is the general form and how we can get the general form from this given model. So we had the objective function. It has this fixed cost component and cost due to walking. So the first part in this model over here is my fixed cost component. It multiplies fi value by yi and it is indexed over i, therefore we sum over i. The second is cij xij that comes from this component. And since we have two indices and we are going to multiply all of i and j pairs, we have two summations, one over i, one over j. Let's look at our constraints. The first constraint is our demand constraint. So it is going to be for all j values and we have six of them. And this constraint corresponds to this. So the right hand side is DJ values. Let's look at our right hand side values. Yes, they are my DJ values. And there is a summation on the left, which is XIJ is summed over I. And let's look at our constraints and show why it is over I. So the first constraint on the left, let's look at the indices. The first index is one, second is two, third, Sorry, the first constraints, first index is first decision variables, first index is one, two, three, four. Okay, the first index is increasing. The second, one, 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 and one. Okay, second index is always one, whereas the first index is increasing. That means I'm summing over the first index. What is my first index here? I. Therefore, sum is over I. And right hand side is J, DJ, therefore, my constraint is for all j values and sum is over i. The second constraint corresponds to these and this constraint is my capacity constraint. 
Okay, right hand side is KIYI, given here. Left hand side is summation of XIJ over J. Let's look at the first constraint here to see why it is over J. So first index is one, 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 and one. How about the second index? One, two, three, four, five, six. So what's going on here is first index is always one, whereas the second index is increasing. That means I am summing over the second index, which is J. Therefore, this summation over here is over J. And the index for my right hand side is I. Therefore, this is going to be for all I values. This is how you construct your general form. My decision variable xij is greater than or equal to zero, yi is binary for all i values. So we constructed our general form, we have our coffee shop location allocation problem, we talked about data, decision variables, and we formulated our mathematical model and we found the general form as well, and this basically concludes this discussion. Thanks.